By now, pretty much all of you are familiar with the Shaquem Griffin story. And this is probably for a good number of you, one of the scouting reports, you were looking forward to me doing this as much as any other in this entire draft cycle. And I understand it. Because when you look at this story, and you look at this young man, you, you look at what he's done, what he's been able to overcome, what he has also been able to achieve, and you can take a look at your own stock in life, and you can say, am I making excuses to hold myself back when I'm not realizing my full potential and I have nobody to blame but myself? Like a guy like Shaquem Griffin could inherently come up with all types of excuses and reasons and justifications for why he can't do something and why he can't make it. And you know what? He doesn't care. He believes. And it speaks to the power of will, the power of personality, the power of confidence and belief in oneself, even when nobody else believes in you, that you can do something that can take you to heights you never imagined or never thought possible. And I know when it comes to Shaquem Griffin, that it can be really hard to separate the sentimentality from the evaluation. And I feel like inherently, plenty of fans and some of Draft Twitter will be much higher on Shaquem Griffin and his NFL upside and potential than a lot of scouts and scouting circles within the NFL are going to be. I feel like they're going to kind of pigeonhole him and put him maybe into one bucket or potentially two buckets and some of the fans in Draft Twitter think that there are more possibilities and more potential. And I mean, let's look at this honestly. You're talking about a kid that's all of six foot, less than 230 pounds, who was an edge rusher primarily in college. And he was 230 pounds with a bit of a, a pooch, a gut. Let's just call it what it is. Believe me, I got a gut too. Going away very slowly, but... How much bigger can he actually get if he's already playing at 229, 230, and he's probably got about a 5 to 10 pound gut? Then you look at him and you say, how is a guy like him, who was an edge rusher in college, possibly going to be able to do that at the NFL? Then you get to the big old elephant in the room that is so obvious that everybody knows about it. It's the fact that the guy only has one hand. He's missing what is left hand. So at times it impacts him because he can't wrap up the quarterback like he might want because when he's trying to get to the quarterback, you realize he's reaching out with a club instead of with an actual hand. It can lead to some missed tackles. You worry about things like ball skills. How's he going to be able to catch the ball? Then you hear Think about a guy who's only really played two years. He still has some growing to do in terms of his instincts and his awareness and his feel for the position on top of the alleged disability and all of this. And it's just really easy to dismiss a guy like Shaquem Griffin. It's really, really easy. It's the safe thing to do. It's the sensible thing to do. Because this isn't baseball. Note the Jim Abbott reference. A thank you. How is this guy going to play with the men of the men and all of this and all of that? Well, you know what? As cynical and jaded as I might be by this world, and as much as you might think that is true of me, because it probably is, the simple truth of the matter is, to all that other stuff, I don't mean to dismiss it, and I don't mean to pretend like it's not a concern or not an issue or a potential question or weakness, because they're there. But if Shaquem Griffin could focus on the positives as much as he has in his life and get himself to this point, then damn it all, I'm going to focus on the positives with him as a prospect. This dude ran a 4-3-9-40 at the damn combine. Again, let me emphasize, a 4 3 9 at 229 pounds with a bit of a damn gut. 4-3-9! He ran the fastest 40 time ever for a linebacker at the Combine. And he's not a safety prostituting as a linebacker. He is actually a linebacker. The dude ran a damn 4-3-9.
He can run with almost anybody in the league. Not Division I college football. The NFL. He's got range for days as much as just about any linebacker in this damn class because of that speed. We can talk about the one hand until kingdom damn come. But he's a great pass rusher. He's got quickness to get around the edge. He's great at bending the edge. In fact, having that club can sometimes be a benefit to him instead of having a full second hand. He can dip his shoulder. He can bend the damn edge. He's got a deadly spin move when he uses it. And even when you talk about at times he could struggle to disengage from blocks due to having only one hand. He's figured out a way to make it work. If he could figure out how to make it work at UCF, I feel like eventually he'd be able to figure out how to make it work at the NFL. Here's a guy that has a lot of upside in coverage. Again, the dude ran a 439. You give him the ability to work on coverage more. You focus on it more with him in the NFL than you probably did at Central Florida. And he's got a lot of upside there. He's solid against the run. He sets a decent edge. He's got a nose for the football and breaking plays up. He got better, like I said, in 2017 in terms of his instincts and awareness. And he's still got room to grow. Still got room to grow. He is nonstop hustle and effort. Like, this is the type of dude that you feel like you went into a fight with. You feel pretty good about your chances because he's a scrapper and he's going to keep coming and coming and coming and coming. And think about this, all for a guy who coming out of high school, his brother Shaquille, who was being recruited by a lot of schools, had to say no to him unless they would take his brother Shaquem. Like Shaquem believed in Shaquem and Shaquille believed in Shaquem and not many other people did. And ultimately Central Florida knows deep down that they only gave Shaquem Griffin an opportunity because they wanted his brother. And after a couple of years of sitting there and wasting away, in comes a new head coach in Scott Frost, a new coaching staff, and they say, you know what, this kid's pretty athletic, let's see what the hell happens. And you've seen what the hell happens the past two years. This guy was an impact difference maker on an undefeated US UCF team that just a couple of years ago couldn't win a damn game. Now they're sitting there undefeated talking about how they're the real national champions. This dude went from being an afterthought or just being a consolation prize that you have to throw in there, an inconvenience because you wanted to sign his brother. And damn Shaquem Griffin, wouldn't you know, might be a better damn player than his brother Shaquille. I think all this talk about mid to late day three, and I think about it this way. is This is a perfect example of focusing on what somebody doesn't have or what they can't do and ignoring all the good things that they can. The dude ran a 43940. That translates in a lot of places. We haven't seen a lot of edge rushers at 230 pounds. Well, you think he can't play weak side linebacker? You think he can't play off the ball? You think that you can't utilize that athleticism in zone and man coverage? You feel like he can't adequately defend the run? You feel like he won't be a deadly effective blitzer from the outside? And, and to me, there's the thing. Is if you say, well, I can't envision a current role, then you know what? If an NFL team can't envision a role for a kid like this, who has overcome so much and was such a good player at UCF, with the legit athletic upside for the NFL that he has, if you can't figure out that this dude could be a special teams demon, and a hybrid multi-positional linebacker who does a lot of different things for you, then I don't know what the hell that says about your coaching staff. To me, this is a guy that should be on 32 teams draft boards. All of them. His absolute worst case scenario, even if you feel like he doesn't project well as a full-time starter, he is a fourth round talent, if nothing else, because of the fire and heart and passion he plays with, some of what he could do in a role on defense, and the absolute demon that he could be on special teams. Worst case scenario, but he is more than that. People have gotten their whole lives, Shaquem Griffin has gone through his whole life with everybody betting against him. It feels like it's time to bet on this young man. And that's exactly what I'm doing. If he doesn't make it in the NFL as a starting linebacker and a really damn good one, 
To me, that's the NFL's ass, not Shaquem Griffin. This kid literally lived in the damn weight room before the 2017 season. This kid loves football. He's grown so much as a player, and he still has room to grow. I'm not going to dismiss him because he has one damn hand. Look at the freaking combine. It didn't hurt him with the bench. He put up 20 reps. He put up more than some of your damn linemen or bigger linebackers with two hands. Want to talk about the field drills? How many of these damn defensive backs and linebackers have bricks for hands? And here he is fucking clubbing the ball, catching everything in damn sight. Now, I'm going to bet on Shaquem Griffin. He's a top 50 player in this draft to me. He is a future NFL starter, a special team stud, a guy that in the right situation in Jacksonville, Minnesota, New England, one of those types of teams that could utilize their linebackers in a variety of roles, should be able to get the absolutely most out of it. Could you imagine a Shaquem Griffin playing for Bill Belichick and what that upside would be? Like, how could you look at Shaquem Griffin and not absolutely fall in love with him as a player or a prospect and say, hey, you know what, I am willing to risk it. I am willing to make a gamble because everybody's bet against him for so long. He's bet on himself. He's ultimately come up smelling like roses. He's betting on himself. Why don't I bet on him? Shaquem Griffin is a stud. Period. A top 50 player in this draft. I don't care. You can at me, you can question me, you can knock me, but damn it all, watch the film, he's a stud. I am all about Team Shaquem for the NFL level. And if I go down, then I'll go down with that young man, because damn it all, if nobody else believes in him, I believe in him!